let's consider the physics of the polarizer. So that's our topic here. Polarizer. Okay, so um, oftentimes it, 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 it will benefit us if, you, if we consider a very specific model. So that's what we'll do now. So what we'll do, we will consider a, a simple model of a polarizer that you can find on sunglasses. So let's consider um, a, a thin layer, a, mono, a monatomic layer of um, of long molecules um, that um, that form a horizontal array like this. Okay, so we have one layer, well, one atomic layer, one one molecular layer of uh, such a thing, say, and you have another layer like that, and you have another layer like that. And how do you do that? Well, you would need you would need to use some sort of depositor to um, to do that, um, and so um, you do that, and um, you get um, you get many many layers. So let's assume that we we will repeat that many many layers, and and each of these layers are very very thin, atomically thin. So um, you know this this whole thing is basically our polarizer plate. Okay, this whole thing is polarizer. It's a very thin uh, thing, um, even if we have many layers, like the, maybe 10 layers, maybe 20 layers, something like that. But uh, it's going to be uh, very, very thin to our eyes. Okay, so now um, let's consider sending some light in here. Okay, so you get. Um, Let's say that the light um, has some wave vector k, and that's perpendicular to this polarizer. And uh, k um, is the wave vector, and the, what is the e vector? Let's consider e vector is um, vertical. So what happens to this light? What happens to this light depends on what happens between this light and its molecule here. So each molecule here is a long molecule lying horizontally and um, electrons can move freely along this molecule as though this is a, a, a molecular antenna which it really is and so um, but electrons cannot move freely perpendicular to the molecules and when you send in light with the electric field pointing perpendicular to these molecules, this light will not be able to interact with, with these molecules because it just cannot drive <coughs> those electrons very um, well. So what happens to this light is that uh, this light will just mm, will, will just uh, uh, appear unmodified after the first layer second layer, third layer, and so on and so forth. So all the way to the end, this light with the polarization perpendicular to these um, <clears throat> to these molecules will appear unmodified to a good approximation. So this light will appear unmodified Um, so let's say that the original intensity is I0 of this light. So I, after passing through this polarizer, is going to be I0. So now let's consider another example <coughs> where the light comes along the same direction with the same wave vector, but in this case the electric field is parallel to this. Uh, to these molecules. What happens to that light? Um, what happens to that light is complicated. Why? Because as we learned in the case of antenna, now this uh, light pointing parallel to this uh, <coughs> pointing par parallel to these um, 
molecules will be um, will be absorbed strongly by by these molecules and drive these elect drive the electrons in the molecules you know sideways and then what happens is that these these electrons inside molecules will be uh, oscillating you know back and forth in the horizontal direction and those electrons will re-emit light when when it re-emits light actually it re-emits light in all directions so what happens is then uh, some light will go through but some light will be reflected back by uh, by these uh, long molecules and so after the first layer um, there is certain probability that this light will be transmitted and there's a certain probability that this light will be reflected back and assuming that these molecules are you know, good good uh, conducting molecules the probability that it will be transmitted will be uh, you know will be um, will be finite it will not be uh, close to one it will be um, you know much different from one okay so just an ex as an example let's say that the uh, um, the probability that it will uh, go through um, the the first layer and appear um, uh, after the first layer is one third so that's the transmission probability that the light will appear uh, unmodified after the first layer now here's the importance of having many layers. Why? Because if you have many layers, and at each layer, you'll have to uh, for the for the transmission probability, you'll have to multiply it another one third, another one third. So if this is n is number of layers, and if you look at the number, you can easily see that this transmission probability will go to zero as n goes to and becomes large and as a practical matter in this case let's say that you calculate you know the probability for three layers and this is actually 1 over 27 and that's actually 4 percent so there it is <clears throat> after the first layer the intensity will be reduced by um, reduced to about uh, 30 <coughs> percent that's a uh, that's still a very significant transmission but look what happens when n becomes 3 if you actually have three layers instead of one layer then that 30 percent becomes 4 percent well that's the power of exponential um, reduction now if you have like n equals about 10 layers which is not too many compared to Three, what you get is about um, 1. 1. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So I didn't do that in my head. I had it calculated beforehand. Um, and so um, this is a very small number. So as far as, as I'm concerned, that's practically zero for all practical purposes of a polarizer in, in, in practical use. So now you can see that when you have many layers like this, you can you can set it up so that um, when the polarization is uh, parallel to these molecular directions, the intensity is actually zero. You don't get any light. Okay, so that's the physics, uh, and that's the basic principle of a polarizer. So now we ask uh, an important question here. What if uh, the electric field is neither uh, horizontal, or horizontal or, or vertical? What if uh, electric field is uh, in this direction, and um, it, it's, it's making an angle alpha with respect to the vertical axis? What happens then? Um, what happens then is slightly complicated, but not too much. So let me explain what happens. And uh, what happens is that you have to uh, cons uh, you have to uh, understand this polarization as being as having this polarization um, 
with some probability and, and this other polarization with some other probability. So how do you calculate the probability? Well, um, the, the probability that this um, polarization can be understood as having this vertical polarization is the, is the cosine of this angle squared. And the probability that this polarization can be understood as having oh, the horizontal probability is actually sine alpha squared. And it it kind of makes sense because if these two are the probabilities, then uh, the probability uh, sum, the total probability, is, is 1. So that's it. So what happens is that for a general polarization, <coughs> which is neither uh, horizontal nor vertical, um, the probability that it will have a polarization vertical is cosine square alpha. The probability that it will have a horizontal polarization is sine square alpha. And, and this polarized polarization will not go through, as we explained here, but this other polarization will go through. So then you can maybe figure, you can maybe figure out what is the final intensity in that general case, what is the final intensity given the initial beam with I0, and that's cosine square alpha. Okay, so that's how a polarizer works. So let me point out one other thing. Um, in this case, the vertical direction here is a transmission direction, transmission axis. Notice that um, the transmission axis is perpendicular to the actual um, directions of these little antennas, to these little molecules. Okay, so that's sometimes a confusing point, but, but that's something that you have to learn. Now, um, let me note that this diagram here is actually uh, pretty close to what uh, what what real um, uh, polarizers on sunglasses look like. In real sunglasses, what we need to block <coughs> is, the, is the light with parallel polarizations because the reflected light um, has uh, parallel polarizations, a horizontal polarization. So in real sunglasses, molecules will, will have to be deposited uh, along the horizontal direction so that uh, th those lights with the uh, horizontal polarization will, will not pass through us. So uh, we will avoid glare uh, from, um, from uh, um, reflected light. Um, another point, if you, uh, this, is, uh, you know, this is the example of polarizer uh, on sunglasses. So the, the, those, um, those lights that uh, we want to, um, that are relevant to this polarizer is uh, a visible light. <coughs> visible light with uh, higher frequencies than, um, for example, microwave light. If you go to the microwave light, then um, the wavelength is much longer so that um, these molecular wires um, can be replaced by a metallic grid with short dimensions along one side. So you can have a metallic grid with um, um, short dimensions along one side and then um, long dimensions um, along, along the other side. So in that case, it's also true that um, um, if you have metallic grid like that, if you have a metallic grid like that, then the transmission axis this is also this is a transmission axis. So light with polarization vertical will pass through, but light with polarization horizontal will not be able to go, go pass through this metallic grid because this the, these metals, you know, they have many atomic layers. So it'll it'll block the beam with horizontal polarization. 